It is 22 past the hour here on Wharton Business Daily on Sirius XM Channel 132. With all that's going on in the world that's not good, it is my privilege, actually, to change the subject to something that I think is very good. And the way this company is is doing business and, and implementing, essentially, its vision. You might have heard of Diversity Incorporated. There's a book out last year. This is not that. They say their mission is to bring education and clarity to the business benefits of diversity. Their CEO is Carolyn Johnson. Ms. Johnson, good morning. You're in studio. Thanks for making time for us. And thank you for having me. Well, what brings you to Wharton today? What are you going to be doing here? Oh, so I will be spending the entire day here. Um, and uh, by an invitation from Dr. Stephanie Creary and Dr. Nancy Rothbard, I'll be doing uh, a, a lecture series this evening. Uh, my day will culminate there on uh, uh, diversity and inclusion in the workplace. Wharton Business Daily. Obviously, we do a lot on diversity here. What actually is Diversity Inc.? Well, you guys, you publish several websites. Yeah, so uh, we are um, we are known for the Diversity Inc. Top 50 competition. Uh, and what that is, is uh, we have uh, companies that submit data. Uh, we look at um, uh, six areas. We look at human capital metrics, so everything from uh, gender to race to orientation to different abilities, um, and how the uh, groups that we just talked about are situated throughout the company, um, also focusing on where they're situated within management. Uh, we also look at leadership accountability. So is this just uh, something that's part of the culture, or are leaders really tuned into this topic to make sure that people are treated fairly? Um, and the ways in which they're doing that from a best practice perspective. Uh, we also look at talent programs. We look at the uh, different types of benefits that the company offers their employees. Uh, we look at supplier diversity. And new uh, in 2019, we really started to take a deep dive into philanthropy. So where are your dollars going and how is it helping the communities in which your company operates um, and which your suppliers do business in? How do we log on to you at Diversity Incorporated? Is it by subscription? Yep. So, so diversityinc.com is a, a site where we talk about um, uh, current events and how that impacts um, your workforce. Um, and then we also have another website, diversityinkbestpractices.com. Um, and that's member-only content where we focus solely on diversity management content topics and um, uh, webinars and uh, uh, meeting in a box tools that have facts and figures for you to use. So there's two different websites. Um, one is like a diversity um, light topics and then the other is a deeper dive for corporations to subscribe. We have so many areas I want to get to about <laughs> companies who maybe talk a good game on mm. diversity, mm -hmm. which I think you ran into, what the numbers are, how mm -hmm. the world is changing mm -hmm. for the better, but that we still have perhaps two separate societies right. when we talk about racial diversity, which is only a part of your equation, right. I know. But let's begin by talking about you. Oh. You're a, you're <laughs> You're from Dartmouth, aren't you? Uh, so I, um, uh, I went to Rutgers. I got my MBA at Rutgers, and I did a, a management certification program at Dartmouth uh, where uh, Dr. Ella Bell, um, she's actually a professor at Dartmouth now, she set up a program called Ascent. And so in support of her, that effort, and both the uh, Business School of Anderson and uh, Dartmouth, I participated in the program. Why is your work important to you? Oh, you know, um, I'm pushing 40, so as, as, as time goes I on... I remember those days. <laughs> Not well, though. Uh, so as time goes on, I think the answer changes. Um, but uh, I, I, at the core of it, I believe that um, everybody deserves an opportunity to compete, um, a fair opportunity to compete. Um, and I believe that I have been given an opportunity um, and a platform and a voice to be able to make sure that everybody understands how they can contribute to that, even if they don't find themselves in that position. Um, and so um, I don't like to talk about diversity as like the, the nice thing to do or the good thing to do. It's the profitable thing to do. It's the competitive thing to do. Um, you know, we, we don't have CEOs talking about this. We don't have companies giving us their data. Um, because it's warm and fuzzy. Um, there are a lot of organizations that have connected um, better business um, a return on investment to proper diversity and inclusion strategy. And so this is about profitability. This is not about the happy, nice, fuzzy, warm and fuzzy thing to do. But there is a tremendously powerful moral undercurrent to what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, I had a, an opportunity to interview Arnie Sorensen. Uh, he is the uh, global CEO for Marriott or um, a corporation international. And um, when you talk about the, the moral portion of it, um, Arnie connects that to understanding your purpose. And so uh, when you are in a position as he is and you have an opportunity to touch so many people's lives and make them better, um, you go between understanding that it's profitable, but it's also the, the just and right moral thing to do as well. So yes, you know, his words are not mine. 
But you still, I mean, here we are in the year 2020. Mm -hmm. African American wealth is one tenth right. of what white wealth is. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got two candidates out there. One is Michael Bloomberg is saying, hey, that's a big deal. That's one of my priorities. I want to do something about that. Right. You've got Bernie Sanders saying that racism is boiled into our, our institutions. Right. Is that why things are, is that why the wheel is turning so slowly? Um, I think. I think there's a lot to be said about what people are saying, but there's more to be said and more importance around understanding the numbers, right? And so if you think about it, according to a uh, September 9th Washington Post article, it was in 2019, um, more than half of new entrants to the workforce are non-white. Um, and if you think about um, the workforce, women are more now than um, more than 50 percent of the workforce. And if you think about um, degrees, um, whether you're looking at bachelor's degrees, uh, master's degrees or PhDs, for the first time, women in the workforce have um, more PhDs, bachelor's degrees and master's degrees than men. And so. Uh, it's not about m so much as focusing on the past, but it's also understanding what does the workforce look like right now and um, what is your reputation with that particular group or those groups that we just talked about and how are you going to manage your reputation with those groups so that they want to come work for you and stay working for you. So um, the that's the business side of it. You know, when we talk about racism and all this other stuff, um, that's the side that allows people to treat this as an emotional uh, topic, but it's not emotion. At the end of the day, it's all about business. And profitability. I, I want to dig deeper a little bit into some of the, you know, rougher issues to discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, let's start with the success stories. Talk talk about some of what Diversity Inc. has done. Sure. So um, I think we have uh, been doing a, a, an outstanding job under the um, the leadership of Luke Visconti, who is our, our founder. Uh, so he named me CEO last year in 2019 at our Top 50 event. Um, I've been with the company for 17 years. And so, um, Luke, let me tell you a bit a little about him. Yeah. Um, Luke is an entrepreneur. Um, he was a he's a veteran. He was a Navy helicopter pilot. He got his commission with the Marines. Um, and so he really does understand um, the lack of understanding between the two groups. So he can help. Um, let's talk about, you know, where power sits. It sits with white men. So he can help white men understand um, what's in it for them. For, again, always going back to profitability. And so Luke, I believe, uh, through the work that he has done, um, in a very unapologetic and direct way, um, has really gotten people to understand why transparency in the numbers is important. And that that's the only way that you gain and maintain trust. And so through the Diversity in Top 50 competition, uh, the information that companies are submitting and then looking to earn a spot on one of our lists, um, and there's 14 lists. We recognize 114 organizations um, between hospitals and um, for-profit and non-profit organizations last year. They are looking for um, a better understanding of where they benchmark against their competition, whether it be by industry or company size. But they're also developing and maintaining that reputation around being a company that values transparency. Just today, Warren Buffett was asked on CNBC about diversity, mm -hmm. and his answer was, my board has to look like its shareholders. Absolutely. Goldman Sachs, very recently, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, came out with uh, an edict that said, uh, I have it here, that uh, they are going to take no company public who does not have a diverse board right. or a diversity plan. Mm -hmm. You've made big strides. We have. Yes, we have. Um, <laughs> as a business community, we have. Um, but again, when, you, when you're talking about these major brands that control <laughs> the way business is done in this world, again, they have been able to tie it back to research that supports that it's about profitability. And so um, we, are, um, we are actually, for the first time in 2020, actually looking at the makeup of your board of directors. So there was a time when people would say, oh, well, you know, we have women or we have, you know, um, different races. OK, but now we're taking it a step further. So uh, what committees are those board members on? So are they on a compensation audit? Like what what power on that board do they actually have? Or are they simply there to be the uh, gender or ethnic diversity on your board? See, I think you hit the nail on the head because right. it's great to hear Goldman Sachs yes. and Warren Buffett say all these wonderful things. Right. But what are the numbers yep. and who's watching? Yep. And when you so it's so and, it's, and that's why competing year over year is important because you can uh, separate the organizations that look at this purely as a PR effort versus a true business imperative. And so that's why uh, I believe when you talk about the impact that Diversity Inc. has had on this space over the past 20 years, we've gotten people a lot more comfortable and used to being measured. Do you have any data that you can share with us on how 
diversity ties to profit. Sure. So um, <clears throat> this is where the uh, the Corn Ferries and the McKinsey's and the uh, Peterson Institutes of the world come in, because I can give you my perspective based on information that is being submitted through the competition. Um, but they actually, using publicly available information, can tie the fact that um, companies that have more women in their executive leadership uh, do not have as many discrimination lawsuits, that governance um, is treated differently and is done better. And so I would say that there, while I can give you best practices from the Diversity Inc. Top 50 competition and the data that we get from that, um, you have organizations that are um, really using publicly available information for all organizations to show you why diversity is um, good for profitability. Why? Do, what, do, what do you think is the toughest challenge for employees and managers today, people who are operating businesses in 2020? Um, I would say understanding each other's differences um, and and being comfortable with that. And so um, with with so many things, when you talk about the election and you talk about all of the topics that are being discussed, um, people have to realize that this is an emotional topic. Right. While while it's definitely tied to profitability and should always be treated as such, when you're talking about the things that people deserve that they're not getting or access that they should have that they don't have. It's emotional. And I think that is probably one of the hardest things um, or one of the hardest uh, one of the hardest things to talk about at work when there are already so many other competing priorities. You mentioned politics. What's your take on Pete Buttigieg? <laughs> um, I <laughs> I think that um, I love how direct he is. Um, I, 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 I love how. Um, he treats uh, the, the the ways in which people come at him with a sense of humor and that he is always able to tie it back to the numbers. Um, so that's my, my take on, on Pete Buttigieg. I think it's a good take. But he <laughs> unapologetically, uh, what's his, uh, his husband's name is Chastin, mm-hmm. and they unapologetically uh, kiss, which caused people like Rush Limbaugh to go ballistic. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, the world is changing before us. Yeah, I think, I, I think that kind of goes back to why this is sometimes a, a sensitive topic at work. Because... Uh, People are not willing to conform the way they were to whatever the culture was or the expectations of the majority was. Um, and I think he is a perfect example, as are as were others who graced the the, uh, the stage at one point in time who may no longer be there, um, that you know, their authenticity should not be challenged because it's different than what you're used to. You know, I, I want to get to an area that I don't know that you'll be comfortable with, but I spent my whole life as a white male. Okay. And I have this sense that as an older white male, mm-hmm. I have absolutely no idea mm-hmm. what it is like to say, for example, be an African-American. Right. That, you know, if I'm sitting among friends because this happened to me when I was 17, I, I, I know I, I can understand what prejudice is like. And an older friend of mine who was African-American said, no, Al, we love you. Mm-hmm. You will never mm-hmm. understand what it's like. Mm-hmm. Is white dominated corporate America... Do they have a clear-cut understanding of what an African-American goes through every day? Um, I I would tell you that it's impossible for me to say that. Um, I can, however, give you some examples of leaders that we're all familiar with um, that, excuse me, that talk about um, how they got um, a better understanding. You'll never understand it 100%, just like I'll never understand what it is to be a white man, right? <laughs> you can or tell me and I can listen to you, but yeah. but I'll never know. Um, but the I think the answer there is that you have an appetite to understand um, and that you are willing to hear it and not be offended by it. And so I think that's that that's the start of it. And it all begins with who you have around you. So um, if the only people that you want to surround yourself with are people who will tell you um, what they believe you want to hear or keep the truth from you, you're never going to have uh, the best understanding. Uh, But if you're Randall Stevenson, uh, the CEO of AT&T, you'll make sure that your board has proper representation of what you want your company to look like, which is really what the United States right now looks like if you're managing this appropriately. Um, And you'll make sure that your executive leadership team are, are people that will come to you and share information with you perspectives that you might not have or perspectives that you never even thought about. But you also have to make sure that you are honest enough with yourself to say you don't know um, and you have to be well read. Uh, There's more than enough research out there, more than enough books so that the answer is never acceptable. I don't know that this is and then fill in the blank. You have to have a connection with people if you're going to properly lead people. We are talking to the impressive Carolyn Johnson, CEO of uh, Diversity Incorporated. I love that answer, and I love oh, that thank you're you. <laughs> really high on ATT, aren't you? Um, so Diversity Inc., um, I, I don't uh, 
I, I don't particularly have a favorite company. It's all about the data, right? And so uh, the six areas that we just talked about, um, if, if they are doing a good job comparatively um, to the other companies that submit data um, and they're sharing what they're doing, um, then it gives me an opportunity to talk about them. So AT&T in 2019 was our number one company. Um, uh, some other uh, companies that are on the list, um, just so you get an understanding of um, the trust that these companies have in Diversity, Inc. Um, you have AT&T, you have Johnson & Johnson, uh, Comcast, you know, who, who's right in your backyard here. They are. Uh, you have uh, <laughs> ADP, um, you have uh, pharmaceutical companies, you have Sodexo. I know that Dr. Rohini Anand, who's now retired, just was with uh, Stephanie um, uh, late last year talking about um, global diversity. And so um, you've got Sanofi, you've got Novartis, you've got some really blue chip organizations that are on our list. So I don't have a favorite. I just know they give us our data and they share their best practices with us. And I'm loving the stories you're telling. And I want to make us a little uncomfortable. I think in order to talk about these uh-huh. things, America has to get a little bit icky because you've really got to bring some of these things to the surface. And I love the work. I love the way ATT responded. Mm-hmm. But you use the term appetite to understand. Yes. Do you have a sense that most of corporate America dominated by white males have an appetite hmm. to understand. I, I think that, um, again, using someone else's words, just because I am not a white male, right? Um, we had we hosted our first ever Women of Color and Their Allies event in October of 2018. Um, and the head of uh, Sanofi uh, Genzyme uh, came a white male, and he was talking about his aha moment, right? And um, what stood out to me was that... Uh, when he talked about the moment he got it, it wasn't uh, about emotion, but uh, the person, her name is uh, Christina um, Santos, she presented it uh, as any other business topic. And so when we talk about people's appetite, we have to make sure we're very uh, strategic in what we're feeding them. And so it has to be about numbers always. It has to be about uh, what the goals of the business are. It has to be aligned. And so I can't fault someone for not having a clear understanding or wanting to know more if it's not being presented in a way that is in line with what they've talked about are their goals. Um, and so when you're deciding where you're going to go work, and that's also another reason why I am very um, excited about what I've done for the last 17 years. Um, it is not just about people in the workforce now. It's about people who are, you know, paying for college and taking out those loans and working on going on to the next stage of their life. I want them to understand the best places to go work for them, not because a company is recruiting them heavily and has, you know, people on campus all the time, but is this best for you? Will you get the opportunity to compete fairly by going to work at these companies? That's what the other side of this is. So helping companies be their best, yes, but also making sure that people have an opportunity to be their best as an individual is also one of my main um, focuses and why I do this work. I broke into the news business decades ago when politicians and other well-meaning people were trying to do the best they can by sometimes coming up with things that maybe weren't the best. Affirmative action. Did Mm. it work? (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I'd i say it did work, but you have to think about who the primary beneficiaries were of affirmative action. Um, and there are studies that um, the, that are you can go to HBR and look and see there are studies all the time that say that uh, programs like affirmative action and other diversity focused programs uh, first and foremost benefit white women. And so um, it worked. But how, how, how is that? <laughs> Why is that? Well, um, I mean, there are a number of different ways. And, and just so we're clear, that's not shade. You know, um, th- this is not a, a, a situation where I'm like saying that white women don't deserve the the uh, the recognition by way of titles or compensation that they're getting. I'm just saying that now that we know how to how to lift up a certain group, we should make sure that we're focusing on making sure all groups are lifted up. So I just want to make that clear. Um, but when you talk about like how is that evidenced? Um, well, when I'm looking at my notifications from the Washington Post or the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, there's uh, Uh, notification after notification that this person is now the CEO of this organization or this person has named been to named to this board. Um, So that's those are the indicators of the fact that it's been working for them because they're getting uh, the the jobs and the salaries that go along with what we've been working for all this time. What does it look like when you approach an organization, a company, you sit down with them? What do you say? Um, So it's it's kind of interesting because I I really pri- primarily just talk to the organizations that complete our survey um, because I think you have to signal that this is important to you and I think the best way you do that is by submitting data to our competition um, and so 
Um, it really is a function of asking questions, making sure we understand why they're doing this, right? I think it starts there. Um, and then depending on where they are in their journey, the conversations are very different. But um, I, I, I very rarely will go and ask a company, oh, why are you doing this, doing that? I will, I will talk to the organizations that are submitting data to the competition first. You are called Diversity Inc. Yes. N- not, in cor- uh, yeah. not Incorporated. Yeah, yeah. Why? Diversity why? Inc. Um, so when, when, uh, when Luke uh, Visconti uh, started the company, um, they were, you know, we started as a website first, right? And so, you know, it, they, they called it bootstrapping. So we started as a website first, and then we launched a magazine. That's actually why I was excited to work there, because there was a print publication that was associated. It's no longer. Um, we folded it, but at the time when I started. And so when you think about um, the diversity being something that is associated and should be focused as a business subject, um, that's why the name of the company is Diversity, Inc., because it's a business topic. Just a really a very short time left, probably half a minute. Okay. Can you give us a little preview on your lecture at Wharton today. Oh, wow. So um, we're, we're going to talk about um, uh, some of uh, kind of what I talked about with you uh, most recently is what we're, we're going to focus on, making sure people understand um, what the workforce of tomorrow looks like, um, how to uh, generate allies, um, that this is, a, as I said, a, an emotional topic. And so there has to be a level of vulnerability that you use when you're approaching it um, and how you need to always focus on the numbers. And we don't need a business case to talk about why men should be leading organizations. So why do we need a business case to talk about why our workforce should be representative of a country? Are you disappointed that, that so far we see uh, not, not a lot of minorities in the Democratic side of this presidential race? I, I'm not surprised, so <laughs> I yeah. can't be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. How important is it to you that someone on the ticket be representative of uh, Hispanic women, African-American? Um, can I tell you, uh, I, it's important to me that whoever is selected understands what it means to be fair to everyone. That's what I'm most focused on. An appetite to understand. Yes. You said. What a joy to talk to you. Carolyn Johnson, the CEO of Diversity Incorporated. Thank you so much for a very important discussion and for making your time with us. Thank you for having me. The privilege is mine.